Welcome to Coffee and Contracts. My name is Rachel Branke, and I am the head photographer and lawyer of the Law Talk, the go-to legal resource for photographers. Talk about legal biz setup, contracts, and copyright, and all the legal things that you need to know to help keep you protected and prevent issues because you never have an issue until you have an issue. Now, as we've been doing coffee and contracts and as we've had the Facebook group for years, which by the way, if you are in the old group and you're not in the new one yet, make sure you jump into it. We kind of wanted to shift over from this huge 70,000 person group into more of an intimate, very active type of environment. And we're already back up to 10,000, but it's super active. A lot of great people providing insight and interaction. So a lot of information there, but some of the top questions that I've been seeing, well, this is one, this, this topic that I'm going to bring to you is something we see that comes up a lot, but it comes up on a very reactive basis. And I think it's something that whether you are a portrait photographer, or commercial photographer, we need to be aware of um, and be knowledgeable for. And I have personal experience of what has actually happened to me in the last few weeks on this, but we need to be knowledgeable of what commercial usage is because we may run into a situation where we have a client that's asking us about what commercial usage is, or we may end up with a, a third party or utilizing our photographs. We don't even know that party and that's copyright infringement, or we have a client that maybe we extended a print release to, and then all of a sudden they're doing commercial usage. And so I want to share a little bit about what commercial licensing is and the thing is, and I and I have to apologize, like, you know, I've been doing this so long. The law talk has been around for beyond 12 years. I used 12 because I remember I literally signed like for the LLC the week I was having my oldest daughter who just turned 12. Um, but I have been doing some work with the law talk prior to that. And I understand I've been doing it so long that sometimes I forget that many of you are new or you just are new to the law talk or you've just never heard me speak before. And so I, I'm trying to remember to approach this every single time that you may not necessarily know. If you do know, wonderful. This is a good refresher for you. Check the box, but there will always be little things that you can pick up on. I think that's one of the great things, little rabbit trail here. One of the great things about education, I'm this way anytime I go to a conference, I go into it going, I can learn at least one thing out of this, whether it's what to do or what not to do. Because actually in the very beginning, and even now I still fight this. And I think sometimes as creatives, we have this whole like imposter syndrome, worried about, you know, negative feedback, not being accepted. And I'm not talking about like qualifying our clients, but just in general, as a human, I have always been paralyzed with fear of being an educator and always having someone walk away going, well, I've heard that before. I didn't learn anything new. And it's, I actually always shake up all the things that I teach, but I talk really fast. And sometimes I just throw the nuggets in there and I don't really slow down. So I apologize if I'm using terminology that you not readily understand, like commercial use license. Like anytime I post in the Log Talk group on Facebook about commercial, there's a lot of crickets. And I can't figure out if it's um, because commercial seems foreign or not really sure how to define, or we're just simply a portrait-based group. But the reality is, especially with us being on the, the tail end of pandemic now, it's been over two years, longest two years ever. Can I get an amen? And I've seen a lot of portrait photographers, even during, especially during pandemic, have to move into understanding what commercial licensing looks like in copyright ownership and how that kind of works. I know some of the key things and I work, by the way, so I have the law talk with contracts and education, which where you guys are now. Then I have my law firm that does all the individualized legal services, but I also do business consulting. And so I work with creatives and photographers on strategy. And I had many photographers photographers that came when everything got shut down, like wedding photographers and birth photographers and newborn photographers. Like we can't go to houses. We can't go to hospitals. Weddings are not happening. What do we do? And we had to look at this pivot of like this crossover into commercial licensing, but it was like deer in the headlights, like, cause you're scared of what you don't know. And us as the business owners, as the leaders of our business, we want to be able to guide our clients, but we're not able to do that if we don't truly understand it. Right. So this is my encouragement to you that if you're sitting there and you're going, I have not even dabbled in commercial photography. I don't even know what that means. That's what I'm going to try to center here for you. If you're already doing commercial based type photography, feel free to, if you're on the live right now, to drop it into the, um, the chat box and I'll try to address a little bit of it, but I can't even express to you because let me give you a perfect example. 
Now I say perfect. And then I realized, wait, the example is going to be about me, but I didn't mean like me perfect. Just, it's just a good example that has happened recently. Right. So obviously you all know what I do and I don't hide that when I go to find a photographer and I I'm always looking for like family photographers and I like to try different styles different types I do branding I do family photography I've been looking for like a mommy and me with my dog type of session of photography uh which Bellamy again why does he disappear every single time I get on here I think he sees the ring light get on and he's like I'm out because <laughs> he knows he's not going to get attention and he goes downstairs but one of the things that I've run into, and I've shared this story with you so that it can kind of maybe open your mind to understanding that if you're doing personal portraiture only, maybe this is something you want to consider because guess what? This is a great way to maximize the clients, what I'm going to get and share with you, how to maximize the clients that you have and better serve them. All right. So within the last few weeks, I have been looking for photographers to come do family photos. Um, when we're going to the beach, we go down to Sunset Beach near Myrtle every year with my parents. Good family vacation. Wonderful town. Very like the closest Walmart is literally like 45 minutes away. It is such a sleepy, wonderful town. It's a great way to unplug, but I love to be able to get family portraits. And the good thing with it is it's like if you do them every year at Christmas, right? It's on the same time. So I can just see how big my kids have gotten I'm like, oh, how cute are they? And that kind of stuff, right? So I'm trying to find a photographer in the area. And not only do you have to go through and try to find the type that you like, right? But for me, I'm also knowing that I have family that are going to be in the photos, but then I also would like to purchase a photography use that's going to be commercial based because of what I do. I do interviews with like Forbes, entrepreneur, podcast, even just my social. You guys will see pictures of my crazy kids and such. And I want to be able to utilize those photos in that capacity. Many of your clients, if you're a portrait photographer, you probably have families who the individuals, one of the parents or one of the individuals in the photographs, probably wants to utilize photos for business. So where I'm getting at this is that I'm trying to approach photographers and say, I'm hiring you for family, but I know that family is typically a print release, which is a personal use license, right? So it's only for personal use. It's like sticking on my wall, putting the album on the coffee table, things like that. It's not to be used on like the Law Talk social, rachelbranke.com, on Rachel Branke's YouTube. I don't know where that New York accent just came from, kind of Jersey. I've been watching a lot of <laughs> Law and Order SVU and Creasy on there. It's a really strong accent. So maybe I'm picking that up because I'm actually from Texas. So I don't know where that little sound came out, but um, I digress. But I know for me that I'm going, not only as a leader, I feel like I need to say, hey, photographers, I want to be on the up and up here, right? I want to make sure you know that I'm going to use these photographs. Well, I want to, not that I'm going to just, I'm not saying I'm just going to do it. I would like to you to take family pictures. And it would be even great if you could also sell to me, because I'll pay for a license for me to be able to utilize it commercially. Now, this is where my apology circling back comes in. I use the term commercial, commercial, commercial. Technically, all of what we're doing is commercial photography. But when we hear at the Law Talk, and if you get on a look at contracts or you get in our group, we speak in a way that um, it's kind of in buckets, right? Portrait photography, and then you've got wedding, newborn, maternity, mini session, all that sort of stuff. And then we have commercial photography. That's where you have the branding, influencer, social media use, real estate, product photography, uh, property photography, like warehouses, restaurants, anything like that, right? And I have a tendency though, just to use the umbrella term of commercial. So I apologize for that. What I'm thinking in my mind is what the end usage that I'm going to want to end utilize the photographs, not just personal, my personal Facebook and all of that, but I want to put it on to social media and for a couple of things. One, I want to do right by the photographers, right? And I'm a little different than most clients, right? Many aren't going to know what they want or they're not going to know. And this is where you come in. I'm pointing at you guys. This is what's so important and where you could do a cross sell and make more money out of one or just serve your clients more, even if you don't charge them more out of one session, right? Because what we end up seeing happening is, is that clients will come. They don't know the distinction between a print release and a commercial use license. They don't know the difference. Just like we often will hear from clients, well, I want all the rights. What does all the rights mean? And actually, as a segue here, 
I have to share this. My mom, I love her. She's so, so creative. Like any creative bone I have completely came from her. And she has always been the most creative person. She does like the cricket cuts. And so she's in all these groups where she does the sublimation. She makes cups and shirts and all this sort of stuff. So she's always asking me these questions. But I remember in the very beginning when she started doing this, she's like, oh yeah, I just found the file online and I downloaded it. I'm like, mom, you're going to get sued. And then I'm going to have to defend you. And I don't have time for that. Not that I wouldn't do it because she gave me life and that's what I would do. But it just reminds me that our clients don't necessarily know the difference, right? Or between rights. And so I, she come, they come over for dinner every Tuesday because they take my kids to Cub Scouts because my mom leads the Cub Scouts. Told you like super creative, does all the things. And so I cook and then she also has me teach her about copyright. So, uh, but I think it's important because it just reminds me and, rem, you know, to a reminder to all of you that our clients don't necessarily know. So when they come and say, I want all the rights, the question is, what do you mean all the rights, right? And if they say, I want to use this for commercial, use what kind of commercial use right because that could range the gamut from simply putting it on the law talk social media all the way up to me putting a billboard in times square on new year's eve right and that's going to have a big licensing difference actually and, and you know what i need to take a time out here sometimes i forget when i am talking that i'm giving business advisement and legal advisement i sometimes don't parse between the two. And just what I teach doesn't mean you have to blindly adopt it. I throw all this out for you, for you to take and to kind of think about and see how you can put it into your business. Now, I do think it's kind of a non-negotiable that we understand the difference between print release, what those usages are, and what like a commercial license, commercial usage is going to be, right? Again, personal coffee table in the home, not coffee table at a brokerage, that kind of difference, right? And well, maybe. And so that is almost a non-negotiable. Then we also need to understand the difference between copyright ownership and all of these licenses. So copyright ownership is that we own, that is the mechanism for us to own the photography. And by default in the US, we own all of this photography in our visual assets unless we contract it away, right? Or we end up, um, we are employed by somebody that's in the course of our employment. And, but for the most of us, we are, you're here because you own your own business. And so you're by default gonna have the copyright ownership. So if you're retaining copyright ownership, that is where you go and decide, okay, print release or commercial usage. Now back around to my example here, maybe you're photographing family sessions and you know that the mom is, um, one of the moms is a real estate agent. One of a perfect way is to sit down and talk, educate, talk and serve your clients by asking them what is the end goal with these photographs not only should you be asking that so you can determine if they want wall art if they want phys physical albums if they only want digital files and being able to start teasing and setting up all that sales but it allows you to start understanding what the licensing if you're not going to convey ownership of, of the uh, copyright away and what the licensing that you're going to want to sell by default most of us for portraiture and the way that we do at the law talk in the essentials bundles remember this is the level one the very basic of what everyone has or should have photography services contract which is by type your print release and then your model release so typically we're only really looking at selling a print release and then accompanied products if you do products but again if you have someone that's in the photographs that you know owns a business, there is a great way to cross sell. For example, going back to my beach example, and I apologize if one of you are watching and you're one of the inquiries that I made, which I did over the weekend because it was like the only real time I had to do it in between working on taxes. And I'm like commercial use, commercial use. And like, even my team was like, what are you doing to these people? They're not responding. And I said, oh, because I'm not really being specific about like what the usage is, right? So that is what I want to equip you all with. You know, once you determine print release, commercial usage, or print release for them to use for their personal usage, and then look at selling, serving a commercial use license, which you could charge additional for to your client. It's a fantastic way. 
FYI, if you're like, I can't stick around and watch this, or I want a little bit more in Get Legit, our online education, I have an entire commercial licensing course where I talk a bit more about this exact type of cross-marketing where you can sell an additional license from one session because why not make double for the one, one amount of time to work, right? And, or you don't even have to charge more at all if you don't want to, that's completely up to you. But like in my situation, what I was saying earlier, I'm always transparent about what I do and who I am, even if they never heard from me or heard of me. And because not only do I want to be able to allow the photographer to lead and either say, yes, I want to offer a commercial license or no. And just because I say no, doesn't necessarily mean I would go elsewhere. It just for me, I would love to be able to utilize those photos because I do a lot of interviews on balancing family and business and they want pictures of family, right? And I'd rather showcase y'all's work than my, you know, like cell phone pictures because my cameras hardly ever leave for my own family stuff. And um, oh, the second thing on that is too, I don't just want to go into it purchasing and this often what happens with clients, not as often as a third party infringing, uh, but go into it with a client and selling a, you know, me getting a personal print release. And then all of a sudden I'm giving it to Forbes with my interview and the client, I'm sorry, the photographer is upset at me, the client, they're upset at Forbes. They send a demand letter to Forbes or copyright infringement. They send a demand letter to me because I didn't have the requisite rights to give. And then it makes me look bad. It's like, it's a whole circle, right? So be on the up and up. But the thing about it is, and what I want to really, really strongly encourage here is it doesn't have to be scary. Just really digging into what type of license, personal, commercial, or both. And then what are the usages that the client wants to utilize it for? Now we have all this at the Law Talk, obviously, shameless plug. Um, and we are beefing up more of our commercial section, very more specifically for you guys, especially branding headshots and all of that sort of stuff, because that's majorly on the uprise, especially with the boom of online business that happened during pandemic. But most businesses know they have to have online visual assets and incredibly important to have it in writing. Now, I will tell you, I've had, when I've inquired to some of these photographers, they say, yeah, sure, use it commercially. They use it, yeah, go ahead, use it. I could then use it however I want. But what if that's not what you, the photographer, intended as me, the client, right? We don't, we want to be as clear as possible because it sets expectations, it prevents issues, it allows you to make more money and provide customer service as the photographer, and it's something to point to if there's ever a legal issue. So just strongly, strongly encourage that you look at doing this because, and I know I've said this probably like 15 times now, but it's because I often, I've reached out to some photographers and again, I'm not shaming if you're in here, this is just a good little nudge recommendation. I'll ask for branding or headshots and they'll send me just a private personal use, like a print release, my own print release <laughs> off the lot dog. And I'm going, I can't use this. And they're like, why? And I'm like, here's some links to the law talk. Like, you know what I mean? Like we, we just, you, we, as the business owners, as the photographers need to take control to be able to educate our clients. Now, I also talked a bit about this on previous coffee and contracts and in the law talk group that it's not uncommon depending on the type of commercial photography. Keep in mind that commercial is the overarching umbrella. Like you say candy and then there's gum, chocolate, whatever else, right? So commercial is the overarching umbrella. Then we've got all these different types. Pricing is going to differ upon the usage and the, the type of commercial photography. Um, and also how you approach it is going to be completely different. Um, and, and I guess I kind of jumped the gun on this a little bit as I should have shared really what all like the big types that I'm contemplating. I've kind of thrown a little bit of them out there. Branding, headshots, influencer, OnlyFans, um, real estate for the real estate agent just for listings, real estate and brokerage for general marketing, uh, local uh, restaurants and um, doctor's offices, lawyer's offices that want photographs of just the facility for their website, right? So like website usage and such like that. So photographs of the facility. So you've got property photography. There's product photography, which is one, if there is an area, if you are looking for a little bit more revenue, this is something that we saw in pandemic that worked so incredibly well with the photographers that came and were like, we're not shooting, I need help. There are so many people that have online shops that do not have solid photography 
that you could you could do it from the comfort of your own home, have them ship the products to you, you photograph them, you ship the products back, or you arrange somehow to keep the products as part of compensation. It is incredible. It is something that you can add on to. Now, obviously, I'm not sitting here and saying, oh, you're a portrait photographer, you can go out and do all of these. Like real estate photography, man, cats off to many of you. The intricacies of that is so incredibly important, right? I think one of the most next logical steps from like portrait photography would be getting into like headshots and branding type of stuff, just because it is, it's really almost relatively the same depending on style, whether you're doing on location or in studio, just actual like old school type headshots from here up. Uh, that'd be a good way to dip your toe in, but all the, you can just look at these different types and see how you can extend to offer this maybe as another revenue stream of your business or directly to the clients that are coming to you for who are wanting this. And I'm not, if you're someone that's like, oh, I'm too overwhelmed. I don't even know where to go with this. That's okay. I just encourage you to do a little reading so that when, or if you get the inquiry, you're prepared when or if an infringement happens simply in any, I'm telling you friends, so many infringements by people that are our clients or entities that are our clients, that they go out the scope of the license, like the example of me photographing for a family and the mom's a realtor and all of a sudden her photographs are being used on a billboard or mailers for her brokerage. Uh, that was a potential sales opportunity. That was a potential education opportunity. Oftentimes it's just lack of education of clients. Obviously this sort of licensing stuff isn't really going to help us preventive wise for unrelated third parties who infringe, which is really the bulk of infringement that we're seeing a lot of, but equipping yourself with this knowledge will help if and when copyright infringement happens, when copyright infringement happens, when it happens by major corporations, because they don't give a damn, um, you'll be, you won't be freaking out because that is probably our number one question <laughs> in the law talk, after, in the law talk group on Facebook after the depositor retainer question for contracts is about um, what do I do? Someone is utilizing my photographs and they did not have permission and it, it will help you to not freak out. I mean, I'd still be pissed. I'm with you. I get pissed for y'all when I have to do, when I do that kind of work, uh, but it'll help you to understand because when we look at an infringement situation, we actually go right back to what you would have licensed that for. That is where we start. Let's say that ABC Candy Company Fill your photograph or two or three and put it in ads on Facebook. One of the first questions I'm going to ask you when you come to me for copyright infringement, even if you're a portrait photographer, right? And you don't do any sort of commercial photography, any commercial licensing, anything that we've talked about so far, I'm still going to ask you, had ABC Candy come to you, what would you have licensed that for? And oftentimes it's, I don't know, where do I start? What do I do, Rachel? And we walk through a lot of what we just talked about here. Who is the entity? What is the usage? What are you comfortable with, right? Having all this as a baseline allows you to decide where you're gonna go from there. So you can see it kind of like through little branches here off of this commercial licensing chat, we know we've got the potential copyright infringement by unrelated third parties being equipped with the knowledge. We've got scope creep outside of a print, re print release or even outside a regular commercial license, license with your client, uh, but also this idea of being able to offer a commercial license of one of your clients requests or for you to sell it to them as like a cross sell during that session, um, or maybe an additional revenue stream. You can see how just being equipped with the knowledge of what commercial licensing is, the type you'd be interested in, the usage, the standards for that different type would really help you to be able to maximize your photography. Now, one example, and I've shared this before on other things, and I talked th about this more extensively and get legit, you may be thinking, well, I'm a portrait photographer, or I'm a commercial photographer, and I don't really want to cross over to the other because I don't want to confuse clients, or maybe you just simply don't want to do it. Don't do it then. That's fine. I still think you need to have the knowledge because copyright infringement is going to come down the pipeline, and I'm going to go, did you watch Coffee and Contracts April 2022? Uh, not really. I mean, I might, but we'll still have a chit chat about it. But I really, where was I going with that one? Um, oh my goodness. Let me take a sip of coffee while I think about what I was saying with that. Knew it. Knew I was going to spill it. That's what I get for trying to have a cute coffee mug on this whole theming, right? Oh, oh, cross-marketing, cross-marketing. 
So with cross marketing, whether you're a portrait photographer or a commercial photographer, you can cross to the other side, you know, separately of clients, right? Maybe I'm offering portrait over here. I can add on a revenue stream of commercial over there. One thing that I like to do when I have the time and capacity to provide, I only, this is the way that my business model is now and it's evolved over the years. You can utilize this if you want, or you can take bits and pieces of it. Cause I do so much with the law of talk, my law firm, my business consulting that my photography is included. Now it's all commercial based and or what my offerings are. So my frontward facing offerings are only to business consulting clients, right? So I'll do commercial photography for them. However, when it comes time, so far I've been talking about, you know, all the licensing out of one session. However, I still can upsell another session going from commercial to portrait. So in June, I may photograph for my real estate agent friend, Danny, uh, for his flyers. But I also know that he has a new wife and stepkids and they're going to need pictures in the fall. I'm more than happy to reach out cross market because I put them on my email list. I have the permissions. I'm following the Can Spam Act. I already know how they work. They know me and they know my work. But I start laying the foundation during the commercial session with Danny and then come in the fall when it's coming up for Christmas card portrait time, fall family portrait time. I'm able to reach out directly to them and say, hey, do you want to do family sessions? And you'll never see those light of day ever hit anywhere on the interwebs because I'm not looking at attracting personal portraiture but you can see by going you can go from commercial and offer personal portraiture or you can go in the inverse right um like we really talked about mostly here offering personal portraiture and extending an additional commercial license out of that session or just knowing that they're a realtor and be like hey danny we're done with your family session you want to get your brokerage set up in the next couple of weeks it's a great cross marketing because once we have a client in the door, you spent the bulk of time, money, and energy acquiring them. Let's dig deep and serve them as deep as possible. And that's really the name of the game. So quick recap on this. Equip yourself with copyright knowledge. Equip yourself with difference of print release and commercial release, commercial license and the different types there. Look at, you know, cross-selling from in your session. How many licenses can you sell? Do you want to sell or cross-market into an additional session from the same client for a different type of licensing, like the whole portrait to commercial, commercial to portrait type of sessions. And be prepared for when copyright infringement is going to happen uh, because it is, and when it comes to copyright, it's being used commercially. You're not going to be able to avoid having to dig into the information of this commercial use stuff. You're not, you're not, you're just not. So really please take your time. Um, this was a good high level outline for you to give you some good knowledge to get going on this information. Because again, dead horse, I'm going to beat again. Actually, I hate that saying. I need to take that out of my, as I love all animals. I love pets um, so incredibly much. So if you know of a dog photographer to do a dog and me session, but, um, I'm going to need a commercial license <laughs> out of that. Uh, but again, we equipping ourselves with knowledge is so incredibly important. Now let's zoom out. Zoom, zoom, like see how I did there. Let's zoom out on this a little bit. We've been talking very specific on like these licenses we extended, commercial and personal and the flares of marketing with that. But zooming out from that, looking really big picture of what we need, I encourage you, you know, we're doing coffee and contracts live weekly um, and it's a good time. It gives you a good hour or so roughly that you're going to be able to sit and learn this information. But as a business consultant, as a business owner, I cannot, oh, I cannot emphasize enough to you how incredibly important it is when you see little things, and I don't have my notebook around me, I think it's in on my desk, that when I see something, whether it's in a group or I just hear on a podcast, I'll jot down something that I want to learn about later. Sit down, dedicate at least an hour a week, if you can. I know sometimes in busy season, it's very difficult to continue your education and spend some time. Like when I do an hour long session, I am focused on one topic. Now, I don't want you to say copyright necessarily and try to understand all of copyright in one hour. Maybe you can dig down into like the question of what am I going to do? Me. Rachel Brinke, the photographer, what am I going to do when I find copyright infringement and kind of spend about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes writing out all the things that you do know and also the questions that you want answered. Spend another 15, 20 minutes doing the research on it, 
learning it, soaking it in. And then the last of the, of the hour, look at turning everything off, all of your electronics and just strategizing what you're going to do because it, your brain is a muscle. If you don't, if you haven't followed me or you weren't here in the intro, uh, I keep with Team USA, I do triathlons, all that sort of stuff. So I use a lot of analogies of working out, but it is true. Your brain patterns are, you know, you can create them. They're your muscle. You got to work them. And the thing with business and this, I asked this question in the law talk group because I was genuinely curious. Legal's not sexy, but like someone else said before, having a lawsuit's even less sexier. But if you're working the muscle, of your brain, your brain, you're working to prepare yourself for this information. Your response when something happens is going to be a lot more level-headed. You're going to be able to operate from a place of more logical reasoning versus emotional. And I'm not saying you can't get pissed. I am mad when I find people take my photographs, but I'm able to stop and go, okay, what is the outline? That's basically what I ask you guys and what we talked about here. Like, what was the usage? Who is the infringer? Where would they have gotten it from? Is it registered? Like going through it so I can formulate a plan. So working through that outline that I just gave you, no matter what topic it is, 15, 20 minutes, brain jumping, what you know, the questions that you have been wanting to know about. Another 15, 20 minutes on researching it and last 15, 20 minutes on strategizing what your SOP or standard operating procedure or how your response will be when that situation comes up in your business. And it's so incredibly helpful because it's going to help to temper any sort of negative visceral reaction and really prepare you for, especially when it comes to legal stuff. Like I said, legal is not that fun. I understand. So maybe you don't want to do legal every week back to back. You can pair it with marketing. <laughs> and kind of ease the brain a little bit, but I highly encourage that that's the approach that you all take. And why not start with commercial licensing, determining if you even want to offer it, what you're going to do when you're asked, and also what you're going to do when copyright infringement hits. I'd also love for you to join us in the Law Talk Facebook group, and please make sure you download the free legal roadmap at thelawtalk.com forward slash roadmap. That also gets you on our email list to find out about great deals. Education won't spam you, just good content. Remember, you never have an issue until you have an issue.